Hey guys, it's your girl Shalane. I'm back today with a second stimulus check update video. In today's video, we have some good news, all right, regarding these $1,200 stimulus checks. We're also going to talk about unemployment and how all this fraud and social security numbers are being transferred all which way. So girl, you may even have my social security number in india then we're going to talk about ebt business grants and more so if you want to know what is going on in the lovely world of stimulus this thursday you already know what to do stay tuned your girls got you covered now if this is your first time tuning into my channel hi hello hey friend my name is chalet and here on this channel we talk about shopping saving and everything in between i would love to have you a part of my internet family super easy click the big old red subscribe button down below when you're in just like that my darling and while you're at it go ahead and give me a like because it's thursday and we're getting so closer to my build your brand on youtube course guys it is coming soon so make sure you check that description box go ahead and drop your email for the wait list because i want you to have it and while you're at it go ahead and congratulate another content creator here on youtube meet kevin he talks about stimulus as well we have conversed before online and guys he was actually featured on MSNBC or CNBC or whichever one NBC. He was on there and he's talking about all the money that he has made on YouTube. And in one month alone, he became a millionaire. One month, the month of May, he made $1 million on YouTube. So for all my naysayers and y'all think that we can't get to the money on YouTube, I'm sorry to tell you, my darling, but uh, there's money to be made on YouTube, okay? So if you want to know how to make it, I'm about to give you the tea, but you got to sign up. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into this other good news, but go ahead and send him a congratulations and say, Chalet sent you with a money yet. All right, so... As of right now, Chuck Schumer says Mitch McConnell has agreed to resume the negotiations over the stimulus. Oh my, Mitch McConnell. Like, what is going on, Mitch? Like, are we really Mitch the Grinch right now? But Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell has agreed to resume the negotiations with Democrats over the potential new bill as cases continue to surge all around the country. Now, last night, they said they agreed to a sit down and the staffs are going to sit down today or tomorrow to try to begin to see if they can get a real good, good relief bill. Now, they didn't make any promises, but he did say this during a press conference today. Mitch McConnell's office did not immediately return the request for comment. So, hey, I think that's great news. Not only is that great news, but some people were saying that with the second stimulus check, the GOP will move forward once President Donald Trump exit, according to Biden. So they said Congress is more willing to negotiate over the next relief package once President Trump removes or leaves office in January, according to President-elect Joe Biden yesterday. He said, hopefully when he's gone, bye-bye, that there will be more, they will be more willing to do what they should have been done, what needs to be done in order to save the communities they live in. Now, we know that Biden is expected to take office on January 2021. Who's going to the inauguration? Let me know down below. Are y'all going to chance this out in these COVID streets? I don't know, but you know, maybe you are, you know, this could be it's history, right? But experts predict that they, there won't likely be an additional direct payment until the first quarter, until he's actually elected. Or, And so at this point, they say it could depend on whether the Republicans retain control of the Senate. Something will be decided, we know, on January 5th, when it's that runoff against the two U.S. Senate seats in Georgia. So remember, Georgia, Georgia peaches, we not done. We still need you to vote 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 like your life depended on it all right now guys don't forget for the first stimulus check if you still have not yet received that and for some reason you're still waiting on your first stimulus check don't forget 3 p.m eastern standard time on saturday is the final deadline to submit your information in order for you to receive your first stimulus check the irs wants to make sure that we are reminding people that you have until saturday november 24 21st to use the none filers tool you'll enter your information on there and at that time they will get all your details now we know that this tool has been available for months and it's been working but everyone still has not used it they said that the taxpayers will be able to claim your rebate credit on your 2020 tax return 
when they file it in 2021 if you don't do it now, okay? So you'll still get your money, just gonna have to wait a few more months. But if you've been waiting this long, I mean, what's two months, what's 60 days, right? Right. Now, according to one more person, the Federal Reserve Bank of Cleveland President Loretta Mester, she said that Congress really needs to act soon to avoid another economic turmoil. She said the idea that we're asking people to make a sacrifice again and not having any aid in place is going to be really burdensome on the economy going forward. And she said, not only is it certainly burdensome on the families that are bearing the brunt. So guys, I know we talked about this yesterday's video. A lot of states now are going back and issuing these lockdowns or putting certain um, positions or restrictions in place following the holiday season. I think Michigan has like three weeks. It's a lot that's going on. And she's like, hey, we can't keep asking families to do this and not have any aid. This is going to just hurt more people. Now, in unemployment, another 742,000 Americans filed for unemployment claims last week. That's an increase than in over a month. Now, this is up slightly from since the week of October 10th. Claims are still more than three times higher than they were the same period last year. Now, according, they said, it's hard to believe the recession is over if workers keep losing their jobs at this rate. But also some workers are being underworked. So they are they still have their jobs, but they're not getting the hours as well. So that's what's going on with unemployment. Now in California, despite all these reports of unemployment fraud, California keeps sending out mail with people's social security numbers. So on there, there was an audit that was done for the California Unemployment Benefits Agency. And they said that they have sent out more than 38 million pieces of mail containing social security numbers since the pandemic began. And they said, this is the reason why we're having all this identity theft. One resident cited that he had received more than 65 pieces of mail from the employment office addressed to at least 15 different people. And when he opened them, now why he opened them, I don't know, because it didn't have your name on it, but when he opened them, it contained social security numbers that could be stolen or retrieved by scammers, or they could use their personal information to obtain any type of benefits. The auditor also said that the mail should be returned as well because they received a significant amount of mail that was unreturned, that was deemed undeliverable, that that has social security numbers in it as well. And they said, this is probably how all this mail is ending up in the hands of criminals. And so as of right now, they said that the investigating evidence of fraud during the pandemic recently, 350,000 benefit cards were frozen so they can try to weed out some of the fake claims but the governor's office did not respond for a comment just yet to let them know what's going on or what the auditor said. Oh, okay. Oh, geez. All right. So as of right now, they're calling this starvation wages. Walmart and McDonald's are among the firms with the most workers that are on food stamps and Medicaid, according to Bernie Sanders Commission report. So a report was done by the Government Accountability Office or the GAO Office. We've talked about them, I think back in June when they were going through about um, the people that were receiving the pandemic or $1,200 checks and they were saying how many people had went to disease. They do all these reports, right? So under the report, they came out and it said that Walmart and McDonald's are the companies that had the most workers on federally funded programs, including healthcare and food assistance, that the thousands of people that are working at these chains are on SNAP, food stamps, Medicaid, and they said that, hey, that they their wages are so low that workers have to rely on Medicaid and food stamps to survive. Now guys, remember a few days ago, we had McDonald's CEO was saying, hey, there needs to be another stimulus. We need another stimulus. I bet you do need another stimulus because why is all these people on food stamps or Medicaid just pay them more wages? So as of right now, 
spokespersons for Walmart and McDonald's, they told the Washington Post that the findings reflected their companies were the reason why they had this issue because their companies are amongst the largest employers in the U.S. That there were other employers, but since they're some of the largest ones, that's why the numbers are higher. But we know that Bernie Sanders said that this is outrageous. So what do you think about that? Let me know. Do you guys have to work a full-time job and still be on food stamps or Medicaid in order to survive? Let me know. Now, also, if you're in Alabama, roll tide. Governor Kay Ivey finally announced what she's going to do with $200 million of the $960 million that we have left. We got like about, what, almost six, eight weeks to spend it. So as of right now, she announced yesterday that Revive Plus, a $200 million grant program that will support small businesses, nonprofits, and faith-based organizations in Alabama that have been impacted by the pandemic. She reassured that the Business Council of Alabama will not be shutting down any businesses as well. So she like, look, we're not taking part of this whole lockdown. We ain't shutting down the business in here in Alabama. I figured, I mean, she said that she wasn't going to do that. Now, if you want this money, entities may receive up to $20,000 to reimburse qualifying expenses if they have not received any federal assistance for the corresponding item that they are claiming with the state of Alabama. Entity may have access to the grant information and grant application on the Coronavirus Relief Fund website. The application period for the Revive Plus grant program will open up on noon, November 23rd, that's Monday, and it will go through noon, December 4th, 2020. So that's all we have, guys. Now, I definitely think that this is some good news, the fact that talks are going to restart, but you know what? Like they say, you know, how about we talk the talk, but walk the walk, okay? Like, can, can we not just talk? Can we get something in place concrete and say hey we're going to get this money can we bring back pandemic ebt can we get some money for the ppp like can we do something congress like after all get in the christmas spirit jingle jingle jingles jingle bells jingle bells jingle bells i don't know i want to do jingle bell rock and jingle bells but hey that's what you get all right so guys that's all i have on this thursday as always please like comment subscribe and i will talk to you tomorrow Bye, guys.